Welcome back to the Liam Photography YouTube channel. In this video, I'm doing an unboxing and review of the LeWinner LED light. And this is the RCL01. This is a USB-C rechargeable LED light that you can use for photo and video. So let's go ahead and get it opened up here. Get it, whoops, get it out of the box. Providing I don't have it packed in there too tight when I put it back together. Because it's a slide apart box. And there we go. Alright, so we open the box up. Inside we have our paperwork, manual, quick start guide, all of that good stuff. And then of course we have our USB-C charging cable, USB-A to USB-C. We have a mini tripod, which can come in handy for various uses. And we have the actual winner LED light. So let me get this out of the bag here. And you can see the light here. It's a pretty nice light. It's very compact. You can use it for stills or video. Um, it has a built-in cold shoe mount on the bottom that's ready to tighten down onto the top of your DSLR, cinema camera, mirrorless camera, whatever the case may be. It does have three additional cold shoes, one on each side and one on the top. And then you have your LCD display on the back as well as the power button. You have the USB-C char uh, port for charging it, and then you have your control dials on the top that have various functions depending on what mode you're in. So let me go ahead and power this on, and as you can see the light is on now, and it is currently on 9000 Kelvin. It does go from 2500 to 9000, and I'm just going to adjust it here as you're watching this video, and you can see the color of the light is shifting. Uh, from pure white daylight down to the more amber, which I personally can't stand. I, I really hate this kind of glow. Now, you may want to use the amber mode at 2500 Kelvin if you're looking to get more of a warm look in your video or in your stills, depending on what you're using it for. And then, of course, we can turn the power or the, the Kelvin scale back up. And it adjusts on the back. I'm not sure how well you can see the small readout, but you can see here now we're back up to 9,000 Kelvin. Um, uh, the other wheel on the top is your power. We're currently at 100%. And you can see it getting dimmer as I crank it down. I'm just going to run it all the way down to zero until it turns completely off brightness wise. There we go. And as you can see, there's no light coming off of it, but the unit is still powered on. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn the brightness back up. Now, next to the, on the uh, LCD display on the back, next to the Kelvin scale and the power levels, you do have a small battery indicator in the corner that tells you how much charge you have left. Now, in addition to the standard amber slash pure white daylight mode, if you just press and release, quick release, the power button, it'll go to green, and it defaults to 50% power and 120 degree uh, angle of light, I believe is what it stands for. And you can adjust that. I'm cranking it up higher now. Uh, oh no, it actually shifts through the colors. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so it's gone from green to blue. And we're, let's see, it's still going. So we're still cranking. We're into purple now. And I think it'll probably top out at red when it gets all the way to the end of the scales. You can see it's getting to be a, a darker, richer purple, and now we're into red and then orange. Um, and it does start all, it reaches its top, and then it starts around again at the bottom of the scale at zero. Um, so 359 is full red, and then if you keep going, uh, sorry, it'll swing back around and start out at orange and go all the way up through the scale again. Um, and it does have a small color strip on the back that indicates the color scale. And I, I apologize, I kind of missed that the first time as I was looking at this. Um, but you can see it on the back here, zero being orange, and then going up through yellow, green, blue, purple, uh, and then into the red scale on the far end. Um, now, if you press it again, it'll actually blink. Uh, between red, white, and blue, more or less. Uh, I guess it shows more red and blue than it does white. It's only white when it's in between flashes. Uh, but I believe it does have different modes for that. Oh, no, it has different power levels. Okay, so let's see. There we go. And then two. So it does have a few different modes. I guess it has to do with how fast it flashes. 
There's three and four. Shows a power lightning bolt on the back, but it isn't actually giving off any light. Oh, there we go. So it does flash. It flashes white. Okay. So, and there we go. There it's going to go through the color spectrum and strobe. So you can see it has a bunch of different strobe modes, color modes, and stuff like that. And then if we press it again, it'll go back to the standard white mode, um, which is convenient. And then press and hold, and it will power back off. Now, it does have a magnet built into the back of the housing here, so that you can stick it to a metal object to hold it up in place for you, especially if you're a one-man operation like I am. So I do like that. That's convenient as well. And this is just a great little light. It's extremely bright. I love the variable temperature on the Kelvin scale. I love the fact that you can change it to different colors from orange all the way up through to red. It can come in handy depending on what your needs are. Now, the other thing I like about this light is it's extremely inexpensive. Uh, these lights are currently selling for $29.95 on Amazon. Um, there's also the more popular... Um, Loom cube lights, but they're considerably more expensive. And I personally have some of the Lytra torches that I bought a couple of years ago, which are very similar to the Loom cube, but less expensive. Uh, the nice thing about the, the Lytra torches and the Loom cubes is they're both made out of metal, where this one's made out of plastic. Uh, but it isn't like it's a cheap and chintzy light. It's a very durable, rugged feeling plastic in your hands. And I'm Fairly confident that this light would be reasonably durable. Of course, it'll probably shatter if you drop it on something like concrete. Uh, but for the most part, it's going to be a fairly durable light and should give you quite a, uh, quite a few years of use. Now, the specs on the outside of the packaging say the model, again, is the RCL01. Color temperature of 2,500 to 9,000 Kelvin. Beads white is 22 pieces. That's how many LEDs for each color is inside here behind this white plastic. So you have 22 pieces for white, 23 for yellow, and you for RGB, you have 28 pieces. The CRI is 95+. plus. Power is 6 watts. The charge port is USB Type-C, as I mentioned earlier. Beam angle is 120 degrees. Voltage is 3.7 volts at 2,000 milliamp hours. And as I mentioned, when you do need to charge it, when you're done using it, you just take the USB-C end of the cord, plug it into the port back here, just like that, and then plug it into a USB-A hub or port on your laptop, desktop, something like that. Or you could use an optional power brick. Just make sure it's rated for 3.7 volts at 2,000 milliamp hours, and you should be good to go. I personally think this light is going to be very handy and convenient for me. Um, I think I'm going to use it quite a bit. I'm looking to probably put this in my permanent YouTube studio once my building gets here and I get it all set up and finished on the inside. The current light that I use for my YouTube videos, I have two of them. I have one that's about yay big that has variable power levels and plugs into 110 volts or it can use the, uh, I can't remember the part number, but the batteries that some of the older Sony cameras like the Mavica floppy disk cameras used. It's also the same batteries that the um, Atomus Ninja uh, external monitor slash recorders use because I have the Ninja 2 as well as the Ninja Star. So I've got several of those batteries. And then I also have a larger LED light that's about yay big that also takes those same battery packs, which is convenient, or plugs into 110. But I think I might start using this in my YouTube studio for some of my videos just because it's more convenient, it's small, it's compact, and still gives off a lot of light. So I personally would recommend this light. I think it's a good light. Like I said, it's not going to be the most durable compared to some other lights on the market like the Loom Cube or the Lytra Torch just because it's not made out of metal, all metal construction. Uh, but that's also how they help keep the cost down. But as I said, it's a pretty rugged feeling light. It doesn't feel like cheap chintzy plastic that's going to easily break in your hands as you're using it. Um, so I think you could get quite a long time of use out of this light. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this unboxing and review, and I will see you all next time.